When did you first convey this information to the commission? Um, I think it was when I first, um, it was quite recent. It was, uh, like I said, you know, after the interview, I was reminded by my wife that there was a bus that came in. Um, and, and that was what. Okay. Was it yesterday? Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Han Dong appeared before the public inquiry today, and we're not going to sugarcoat this one, folks. We really hope he has a good lawyer. Before we get into the video, we want to refresh everyone's memory of how Han Dong was dragged into this in the first place. Here's an article from Global News dated February 25th, 2023. Three weeks before Canada's 2019 federal election, national security officials allegedly gave an urgent classified briefing to senior aides from Prime Minister Trudeau's office, warning them that one of their candidates was part of a Chinese foreign interference network. According to sources, the candidate in question was Han Dong, then a former Ontario MPP whom Canada's Canadian Security Intelligence Service had started tracking in June of that year. National security officials also allege that Dong, now a sitting MP, re-elected in 2021, is one of at least 11 Toronto area riding candidates allegedly supported by Beijing in the 2019 contest. Sources say the service also believes Dong is a witting affiliate in China's election interference networks. Three sources with knowledge of the investigation said Dong emerged as a successor to MP Zheng Tan as the 2019 Liberal candidate in ways the service found suspicious. These sources spoke to Global News on the condition of anonymity, which they requested because they risk prosecution under the Security of Information Act. CSIS allegedly had intelligence that Beijing preferred Han Dong to Tan. Quote, the consulate was not pleased with Gang Tang's performance, and quote, a national security official aware of the service's investigation told Global News. The service relied on surveillance and wiretap evidence, as well as a human source reporting, sources said. In late September, about 48 hours before the federal election nomination deadline, CSIS urged Trudeau's team to rescind Dong's candidacy, a national security official said. Sources allege that Dong frequently called Chinese officials in Ontario and, quote, was considered a close friend of the Toronto consulate, end quote. CSIS was also allegedly concerned about the Liberal Party's nomination process. Among other irregularities observed in the September 2019 contest, sources say was that Chinese international students with fake addresses were allegedly bussed into the riding and coerced to vote in Dong's favour. An official with knowledge of the brief also said that the service alleged that, quote, Han Dong was a close contact of Michael Chan, who is a target of CSIS, end quote. Chan, a former Ontario cabinet minister, is a political kingmaker and pivotal liberal fundraiser. Three intelligence sources said investigators believe Chan had orchestrated Tan's ouster with a campaign that persuaded Justin Trudeau's aides to back Dong instead. Sources aware of the intelligence said the alleged warning to the PMO about Dong and Chan did not provide details of the ongoing investigation, but instead outlined the concerns. They said the warning was intended to protect Canada's democratic institutions. Those same sources aware of the service's Don Valley North investigations were also troubled by the perceived influence of Chan, who is now Deputy Mayor of Markham. They say he secretly provided political information to the Toronto Consulate and also promised to attack critics of the Chinese Communist Party. Now that everyone has that context, let's get to the video of Han Dong being questioned today, April the 2nd, at the public inquiry on foreign interference. June 2019, the Liberal MP in Don Valley North, Geng Tan, announces he's not running again. Yes. And you throw your hat in the ring at the end of June 2019, is that right? Um, in June, yes. Okay. There is ultimately a contested nomination contest uh, for that riding or for representation of the Liberal Party in that riding, is that right? That's right. And it's uh, you and who who are running against each other? Um, it was me and Ms. Bang Okay. 
and I understand that the nomination contest was held on September 12th, 2019? That's right. I want to ask you a little bit about busing irregularities okay. at the 2019 Don Valley North nomination contest, okay? Yeah. When you met with Commission Council on February 21st of this year, we discussed whether you were aware of any irregularities in the 2019 DVN nomination contest. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And we also discussed how your wife had rented a bus on behalf of the campaign to transport voters to the nomination contest. Yes, we discussed that. But later on, uh, I was reminded there were two buses. She that's right. Yeah. And, and you, that's one of the things you clarify in your supplement. That's right. Okay. I understand that you've also recently recalled that beyond the two buses that your wife was involved in procuring for the campaign, there was another bus that you became aware of bringing voters to the nomination contest. That's right. Okay. Can, what can you tell us about that bus? Well, I was the candidate. Uh, I was told by the campaign uh, that uh, there were um, students coming uh, in a bus to vote. Um, uh, I was reminded recently uh, that um, by my wife that you know there was a bus um, came in with students. There was a bus coming with students. Or oh, there was a bus, you know, with students coming in to vote. Okay. Can I just get a little more detail about that? Sure. Where, where were these people, students at? What institution? Um, I, so I, I didn't see them, but I was told that they came from uh, a residence, a student's residence in the writing. Okay, what's the residence? Uh, it's the residence at Seneca College. Okay, a residence at Seneca College. That's right. And what school were they students at? I believe it's a private school. Okay, what private school was it? Uh, I think it's called the NOIC. NOIC? Yeah. Do you know what that stands for? Uh, I think it's New Orient. Um, I don't know what IC stands for, maybe International College. Okay. And had you ever had any connection to the students from NOIC? Uh, I had. Uh, during my uh, campaign, I remember visiting the residents yeah. and had a conversation with the students uh, that came to the gathering. Uh, and I asked, encouraged them to volunteer for my campaign. And for those who are eligible, I encourage them to register as liberal members so they can vote. So they can vote in the nomination contest. That's right. Okay. So the interesting thing is that Hondong nailed the acronym. It is the New Orient International College. And Fox looked it up. It is a school that's actually located within the Seneca College campus. Well, I don't think the school is located within the campus, but the residence definitely is. Yeah, so it seems like the school is renting a residence from Seneca College for international students that are attending there. So isn't it interesting that this random school bus shows up from the New Orient International College with high school students to vote? Now, here's the, the, the thing that we have to keep in mind here. This is not the federal election that they're talking about right now. This is the process by which a candidate for the federal election is selected at the writing level. So you have multiple candidates that want to be running for the Liberal Party for Don Valley North. That's the writing that, that Han Dong is, uh, is an MP of. So these MPs are competing and the way they compete is they go out into the riding, try to sign people up for the re for the Liberal Party and get them to come out to the nom uh, to the actual nomination meeting where they vote for the preferred candidate. 
Yeah, and this we learned um, during that brief stint that Cypher was considering running for office. Um, you have to win the primary first before you go anywhere. And how you do that is people within the riding who are also members of the party need to vote for you to say, this is the person that I want to be the, the nominee, like the nominee, so that if they win, they'll become the MP. Now, the interesting part about this is that the federal voting regulations and restrictions don't apply. So you can literally get high school students to sign up for the Liberal Party, come out and vote. Well, and that that's exactly it. They don't even need to be citizens. It really depends on the party's constitution, their internal rules that, that govern the party as to who can vote and who can can support a candidate to be the one that goes on the ballot. So then when the candidate is selected, all of a sudden, all of the regulations that govern Elections Canada, they kick in. And those same people that voted for this candidate, if they were in high school and not the eligible voting age. Or citizens. Or citizens. All of a sudden they can't vote. So doesn't make too much sense to me. It does make sense, though, if you're in a riding that traditionally votes liberal or traditionally votes conservative or con traditionally votes NDP. Like, they always vote for a specific party. It doesn't matter how many years it's been. That's the only time it makes sense. Um, well, tell me about this meeting at NOIC with these students. When did that occur, approximately? I don't remember clearly, but it was in the summer between June and September. Okay, how many students were in attendance? Um, I don't remember, it's very vague. I probably 20, 20 students. Okay. How did you, um, how did you come to be at this school? Were you invited there? Um, I, it was arranged by my campaign. Uh, you know, it was a relatively short period of time for the nomination race. So my campaign and myself did our best to reach out to all kinds of groups in the writing and schools, schools included. This doesn't make sense to me. You're trying to get as many people to vote for you as possible in this nomination. And you're saying that you found it valuable to show up to a school when there's only 20 like students, people that are the least likely to actually come out and vote. Right, during the summer, when students are not typically in school. Right. The only reason that I can think why this would, this would be a good idea is that A, there was more than 20 students, and B, as it relates to that article that we shared with everybody before, that these were all international students from China that were being briefed as to how they were going to vote in the upcoming election in terms of the nomination. Not the federal election, the nomination. Because they're not old enough to vote in the actual election and they're not citizens, so they can't vote in the federal election. Otherwise, why would you waste your time? So your campaign arranged this for you to go to a, a, a school yeah. to solicit support from students? That's even even the guy who's questioning is like, your your so your campaign asked to, to arrange this to go to a school, right? Because again, if it's a high school, most of the students there are not going to be above the age of majority, so they can't vote in a federal election. And this particular school, it sounds like it was primarily international students who wouldn't be citizens who wouldn't be able to vote in a federal election. And why would students that are international care about choosing a candidate for the federal election when that has nothing to do with how their school is even governed because it's a provincial matter? I mean, I've never been in a foreign country for a lengthy period of time, but I imagine if I was and I knew I was going to end up going back home, I wouldn't really be too interested in the politics of that country, especially not interested enough to sign up for one of their political parties and then vote in their primaries. Yeah, that's going to be the last thing I'm interested in. 
Like, this is so weird. It's for volunteers and support if they are eligible. And who on your campaign suggested this or organized this? I, I don't remember, but, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, a small but very effective campaign team, so it could be one of them. And who was that campaign team? Uh, I remember uh, my wife was taking part of the campaign team, uh, Ted Loiko, um, Elizabeth Potosky, uh she was there. Um, yeah, mainly these individuals, Johnson Sal, who eventually became my uh, EA. Okay. And these students who you spoke to, um, what language did they speak? Um, they, they, they spoke, I remember some of them spoke uh, good English, uh, but uh, Mandarin. Okay. Uh, and what yeah. country do you believe they were nationals of? Uh, I, I, I think, I assume that they were uh, from PRC. Okay, so international students from yeah. China. Uh, hmm. So it sounds like not many of them even spoke English. There you and go. And they certainly didn't say that any of them spoke French, so I think we can assume that none of them spoke French. Right. So they don't speak or, or hardly speak either of Canada's national languages and primarily speak Mandarin from the sounds of it. They're not Canadian citizens. Why are they interested in joining Canada's Liberal Party? And here's the other thing. Let's go back to the main question. Who arranged this, right? Well, it sounds like the person most likely to arrange this is going to be somebody who speaks Mandarin. It's possible, possible one of the, the, the English speakers, but again, why would one of the English speakers think of, I know, let's, let's get him in front of an international, international school who everybody's, everybody's from China. Let's do that. That would be great for the nomination. What? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. The only way it makes sense is that they did it kind of tricking the system, I guess. All they cared about was numbers. We can get more this way. We can get more votes for Honda on this way. And by votes, again, I don't mean during the federal election. I mean during the candidate selection process. This is the process in which the party, in this case the Liberal Party, chooses whose name is going on the ballot. Although I can't be sure that they were all international students, as I said, it's a private school. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, this information about a bus uh, coming to the nomination campaign, as I understand it from, from your supplementary statement, the purpose of them coming there was to vote, presumably. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. And how did you find out about that bus having been at the nomination campaign? I was told by my campaign staff afterwards. Okay, again, do you recall who told you about it? I don't, I okay. don't recall. And when were you told about this bus having come? Um, I can't remember exactly when, um, but it was shortly after the campaign. I mean, we talked about the nomination campaign and that came up. Okay, and when you say shortly after the campaign, does that mean shortly after September 12th, 2019? That's right. Okay, and so just so I understand it, someone on your campaign staff said effectively during the nomination vote, a bus showed up with a bunch of international students or students from NOIC, something to that effect that, that twigged the connection for you between campaigning at NOIC and the folks who arrived to vote for you. That's right. Okay. Do you know who arranged or paid for the bus? Um, you mean the, 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 the bus with the students? Yes. I don't. Do you know what kind of bus it was? Like anything you can tell us about that bus? I, like I said, I, I was busy shaking hands at the door, so I didn't see the bus, but I was told it was a school bus. Um, so I, at the time, I assume it was a shuttle bus by, provided by the school. Okay. Do you know if there was any coordination between your campaign and whoever sent the bus? Uh, I don't know. All right. And when did you first convey this information about there being a bus containing international students that voted 
in your nomination race. When did you first convey this information to the commission? Um, I think it was when I first, um, it was quite recent. It was, uh, like I said, you know, after the interview, I was reminded by my wife that there was a bus that came in. Um, and, and that was what. Okay. Was it yesterday that that information was conveyed to the commission? Uh, it was yesterday as a supplementary um, information. Mr. Dong, when did you provide that information? Uh, 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 yesterday? It was quite recent. I suppose, to his credit, he could be nervous. Because it sounds like some serious stuff is going down. So, yeah. But, but still, it's not really an excuse. Well, but recall his answer. He said, oh, it was quite recent. Oh, it was quite recent. Um, yeah, you know, cause, cause, uh, you know, we had the meeting, uh, in February, uh, my wife reminded me of it and, and yeah, that's, that's when it was. Except it wasn't provided. You didn't provide the commission with the information until yesterday. Like literally April 24 1st. hours ago. Yeah. You know, and there's one more thing that he had said that I found extremely suspicious. He doesn't know who provided the bus as in who paid for the bus. And then says, I believe it was a shuttle bus provided by the school. Why would a private school charter a bus to drive their students to a liberal candidate nomination? Well, that's the thing they wouldn't. So either he's lying and it was his campaign that did it. Or there's a reason that this school chartered this bus. Yep. Yep. Or the school didn't charter the bus at all. Well, that's what I'm saying. Either he's lying that, that he says it was the school when it wasn't, it was his campaign, or maybe it was somebody outside the campaign. We don't really know. Right. And and they're saying, well, did you did you campaign coordinate? And he's like, I don't know. Like, that uh, seems like you, a pretty serious thing to not know. A few minutes ago, you said you had a very small but effective campaign team. So you had like four people. You didn't ask any questions. Hey, did we, did we pay for that? But like... You're not going to ask that? Well, and here's the thing that we learned very briefly from Cypher's attempt at possibly running for office was you have to be on the ball with your financials. If it is your com campaign that is paying for the bus, you know damn well that it's your campaign paying for the bus. Yeah, and you have to declare that. You do, because if you don't, I believe you can go to jail for like fudging your your campaign numbers. It's a serious even serious if it's issue. by mistake. Yeah, it's a serious issue if you fudge your 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 numbers in your campaign. So this is very bizarre. And when did your wife remind you about this? Sorry? What yesterday was April first. Right. When did your wife remind you about this bus? Uh, it was after our initial interview, so after the twenty first. Okay. I don't. I don't have. I don't remember exact which day. It's been about six weeks since April first. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It, it's been about six weeks since February twenty first when you were interviewed. How, roughly, when in that period of time do you think that you had this conversation? Uh, so this is where the questioner is like, "What do you mean you don't remember? It was only six weeks ago." And this is where he's saying, "Was it? Was it right after? Was it sometime after? Was it a week ago?" This is where he's 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 starting to think, "What's going on here with the answers?" Um. I think it's closer to yesterday, so maybe um, I really don't remember. But it feels like the you know, towards the end of March. I'm sorry. It feels like it was towards the end of March. Towards the yeah. end of March. Okay. I understand that you were on a delegation to China from March 22nd to March 30th. Yes. Was it while you were in China that no, you had? No, I think it was before that. Okay, so before March 22nd. Yes. Okay. Did you? Um, did you take any steps to advise the commission prior to yesterday about this information? So now this is a problem because he, he actually caught himself in, 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 in an issue because 
he was saying, well, you know, it was towards it was towards the end of March. That way it didn't sound it doesn't sound like it was a long time ago. <laughs> and then he's asked, well, you were in China the last week of March, weren't you? Oh, crap. That's going to sound bad if uh, if I say I was in China when she told me. I guess she couldn't have told me while I was in China. Oh, no, it was before that. Oh, it was before that. So your wife told you about this. Then you go to China. Then you come back and you go to China immediately before this public inquiry. Just so we're all clear on that. Yeah, that's a little suspicious. And then you come back and you immediately disclose that there was a bus. Really? Okay, but here's the other problem. He's saying, all right, so your wife told you before you went to China. Why didn't you tell us? Why'd you wait until yesterday? Well, and this is how a skilled inquisitor finds and breaks down lies. You can see what he's doing. He's, he's trapping Han Don. Oh, but you were in China the last week of March. Oh, yeah, well, I guess it was before that then. So why didn't you tell us then? You know, it, he's very surgical and skilled in what he's doing. Well, there's no motion. He's straight tone. And that's to keep the witness very comfortable, right? Um, there's different styles of interrogating. Um, this is um, this is a very interesting one because it's just everything's monotone question. It's just seeking to understand, seeking to understand. Um, and uh, in ways that, that can actually trip up someone who's telling some falsehoods because they get too comfortable. They start fe feeling, oh, this guy's my friend. He's not your friend. He has a lot of answers in front of him. Um, this is a big problem here, folks. Why didn't you try to tell us before this? no response that's not a good look this is a huge problem here why didn't you uh, i don't have an answer to that i need an answer no okay um, I, just I spoke wanna... to my lawyer about this okay uh, i'm not gonna ask you about that okay um to put this in context um I take it you're aware that since February of 2023, there have been allegations in the media about irregularities in the 2019 Don Valley North nomination contest, right? Okay. Are, are you aware of there having been media reporting about irregularities in that nomination contest? Uh, 20, to February 2023? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. And are you aware that those irregularities have specifically been the reporting about those irregularities has specifically been around busing and foreign students um mm, no i don't know what those ir ir irregularities were referring to okay so you were all right <laughs> so, <laughs> um the uh the questioner is just filing that away. So were you aware of the reporting in February of 2023, which we just read you, about the irregularities in the nomination? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so you're aware that there are irregularities related to busing. Well, I'm not aware of what the irregularities are that you're talking about. What? Again, this is how the Inquisitor breaks apart these lies and exposes it for everybody, for the Commission, for the Canadians, for everyone. And you can see how how the, the Inquisitor kind of short-circuited there for a minute. It was like, but you just said, okay, never mind. <laughs> just filing that away. Were you following uh, David Johnson's report? about i read parts Florida. of it you read parts of it yeah okay were you following his testimony at proc i don't recall okay. 
watching it. Do you recall whether he ever said that there were irregularities around the nomination meeting and the busing of people and students in relation to Don Valley North in 2019? I, I don't recall. Okay. When did you first become aware that there were allegations of irregularities around busing and foreign students in Don Valley North in 2019? It was in uh, Mr. Johnson's report, I saw that um, the, he mentioned irregularities, but um, I never connected irregularities to busing uh, of students. Okay. Did you, did you read the, any of the media reporting that discussed that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you know when you read the media reporting discussing irregularities around students? I can give you a date. Okay. I can give you a date. Was it before you spoke to the commission six weeks ago? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you read David Johnson's report. Like, this is so bizarre, these answers. It, it really is. Um, because he's trying not to expose what he knows is what it sounds like. It seems like he's hiding something or he's lying or he's he's trying to cover something up. He's not being truthful. It seems like he's very concerned about... Well, he tripped up on timelines before, so now he's. it seems like he's overly concerned about timelines. And he's trying to figure out where these questions are going. So... Like, I don't know if I'm reading too into this or, or, or not, but it's just, it's very strange answers. Like, uh, like I'm sorry, if, I, if I'm if i in Han Dong's position, yeah, I'm going to be nervous, 100%. But I would have come here very prepared. Like, did you did you read media reports of, of this? Yeah, I did. When did it? Probably to the latter half of last year. Oh, okay. Um, so that was definitely before we, we spoke. Yeah, definitely before we spoke. And... You know, I would have very clear all of, I would have reviewed everything possible. If I was in the center of this, I would have reviewed everything possible. And and for him to say, well, you know, I, I, I don't really know if I've read the media reports that came out in February of last year, which started this whole thing, which, you know, Trudeau was asked immediately after that. That's when he called everybody racist, if you recall. Well, and I don't understand how Hong Dong didn't really read the media reports, but is suing Global News. Right. So he doesn't read the media report when it says you were cooperating with Chinese agents to get elected. Um, but you you read Global News when they said that you were speaking with the consulate and said to the, uh, the Chinese ambassador, it may be a good idea and helpful to the Liberal Party if you, you know, don't release the two Michaels right now. That's when you're going to sue them. Okay. Okay. Did you did you read the, any of the media reporting that discussed that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you know when you read the media reporting discussing irregularities around students? I can give you a date. Okay. I can give you a date. Was it before you spoke to the commission six weeks ago? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When we interviewed you about six weeks ago. Um, you recall that we discussed international students volunteering and voting in your nomination campaign? Yes, we did. Okay. And we discussed um, busing as well? I remember we discussing busing of seniors. Okay. Yeah. The subject of busing came up, though? Yes. Okay. And you told us about the bus, and now you've clarified you think it was two buses that your wife rented right yes. and we asked you about irregularities that were described by david johnson right right and the the thrust of your response was you'd like to know what the irregularities were that's right okay <laughs> so this guy is basically saying so you didn't seem to recall this when we interviewed you on the 21st of February, when we discussed students, we discussed irregularities, we discussed busing, 
Let's put all those together. Busting irregularities involving students. And that didn't jog your memory. Apparently not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Inquisitor is just like... He's not buying it. He's not buying what Hagan yeah, yeah. is trying to sell. He's just like, all right, <laughs> moving on. Did you understand from all of that context, the media reporting, David Johnson's report, maybe his testimony before Proct to the extent you were aware of it, did you understand from those questions that we were interviewing you because we were trying to get to the bottom of what happened in the Don Valley North nomination contest? Yes. Okay. Did you understand that our investigation included looking at allegations of irregularities around busing and international students when you were interviewed? Mm. I, I didn't pay attention to, you know, busing international students because at the time I still, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand it as a, as a irregularity. What? You know, I'd read the media reports, allegedly. Okay, so this is a very serious issue that you're being accused of essentially cheating and how how would you say it? Like like throwing the primary so that you could be on that ballot? Like this is serious stuff. He's like, no, I don't really pay attention. How many other high schools in your riding? provided students to come by bus uh none right so why this specific private school that's the question that is the question you didn't understand it as an irregularity that's right okay. why didn't you tell the commission about this earlier <laughs> So first, you didn't, like, the Inquisitors is just as incredulous as we are. You didn't understand this as an irregularity? No. Okay. That, that was his response. Okay. Thanks. I'll just take that one. Well, Handan's really backed himself into a corner on this one. Like, he's gone beyond the point of absurdity. Yep. And uh, the problem is, is this is where he, ha he has to go. Right? This is absolutely where he has to go. Otherwise, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. But I think he's going to be in a lot of trouble anyway. Right? So, you got to pick that hill and you got to die on it and retreat into absurdity no matter how far it goes. But now he has to answer the question, why didn't you tell us earlier? Earlier? Um... Well, first of all, I, like, like I said, I was reminded after the interview. Um, and, uh, you know, to be an international student, I, I, I met them, canvassed them, uh, signed up. They showed up to vote. To me, it's pretty regular. Yeah. Why did you tell us about it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's on fire. And he's like not making a face, not breaking a sweat, just question, question, question. Well, because again, so why didn't you tell us? Handong plays it off as, well, it's a normal thing. High school students show up to vote. It's a regular thing. So then he says, all right. So if it's a regular thing, why did you tell us yesterday? Yeah, why did you wait until yesterday to tell us? Well, he's saying, why did you tell us regardless if this is just a regular thing to you? Oh, I see what you're getting at. That was his justification for not telling them earlier. I see. I see. So now it's like, oh, crap, this could get me in trouble. I better disclose it. Disclose it. Why did I tell you about it yesterday? Um, this is like, okay. This wasn't ancient history, folks. This was yesterday. He doesn't have a response. Like he's like searching for a response. This, I don't buy it. This is a total train wreck already. Yeah, I don't buy it. 
Come on, the, these are questions you know you're going to be asked. And if, if you're being truthful, come on. Well, and that's the key. If he's being truthful, these should be easy answers. Right. And these are the easy questions, folks. I was having a conversation with my lawyer, and I said, um, you know, it, it just it came to me. Just a second, Mr. Dell. Uh, sorry, if we can just make sure Mr. Dong is reminded not to be speaking about the contents of our discussions. I mean, if the point is that it came up in our discussion, that's fine, but I wouldn't want him talking about our discussions. So the gentleman that just stood up is, uh, is Hondong's lawyer, Mark Polly. And it's interesting that his lawyer has to stand up and say, Oh, well, um, uh, that was a discussion he had with me. So he can't answer why he told you yesterday about a bus. Well, I mean, again, to the guy's credit, his lawyer wouldn't be doing his job if he didn't interject in that manner. Right. But it's a bus. If it was nothing... I, again, to Hondong's earlier point, if this is like normal procedure, it happens all the time. Why is your lawyer jumping in the middle of a public inquiry and preventing you from answering this question? We don't know. So, unfortunately, that's solicitor-client privilege. Do you have any sense why your wife reminded you about this? Uh, we were talking about, you know, this case and upcoming um, uh, or this ongoing inquiry. It's a regular topic of our conversation, and she reminded me. Can I roll things back a little bit? I wanted to ask, why did you decide um, to spend uh, part of your time during the nomination campaign uh, visiting a school for international students? Why did I spend time visiting international st uh, students? Yeah, well, wh why did you solicit support for your nomination campaign from international students? Well, it was, a, you know, it was a short period of time for the campaign, and I was reaching out to as many groups as I can, uh, senior groups, uh, student groups, um, looking for volunteers. Um, and uh, if they live in the writing, eligible to vote. And I, I, I encourage them to sign up as, a, as, a liberal, as a liberal members. We may hear some evidence from Mr. Loiko that nomination campaigns don't usually target high school students because they're typically not motivated or reliable voters. Do you agree with that sentiment? I, to me, when I when I met them, they they, they look they're interested. Uh, I remember like uh, when I meet was in general high school students. Um, they, they, my impression is they're interested in, in the process and they would like to volunteer. So I can't tell you why, um, that was Mr. Loiko's observation. Okay. You don't share that view. I, I, I'm a candidate. I'm out on the street, knocking on doors and the operation of the campaign is up to the manager. What? I'm not going to say what my view is because it would get me in trouble. Every, like, I'm sorry, but yeah, you're going to have a few people at a high school that are, that are interested in politics, but the vast majority are not. And that's normal. Well, I mean, again, especially a high school for international students, why would they be interested in what's going on in Canada? I mean, maybe it's possible some of them are, but if, if you're looking for bang for your buck, we'll say, then why are you going to an international school where you could probably assume the vast majority of the students there don't care about Canadian elections? Right. Why would you waste your time? Okay. Um, could we call up document CAN 4728? So 
So this is a um, redacted intelligence document. Um, first of all, in fairness to you, I should make clear that we received your supplementary statement of anticipated evidence before this document would have been made available to you and your counsel. Okay. Um, I also want to emphasize that this is an intelligence document. It's heavily redacted and the assertions or statements made in here are not proven facts, okay? And in fact, right on the front page, if you could uh, page down, please, you'll see, stop, you'll see about the third line down, the first, I'm sorry, the first readable sentence. Um, it's a portion of a sentence, but it says, it was alleged that the PRC interfered in the Don Valley North Liberal nomination of September 12th, 2019, remain unsubstantiated, so there's, a little bit of grammatical uh, elision there, but I think the, the point that it remains uh, unsubstantiated is, uh, is included in that statement. Um, the reason I wanna ask you about this document is just to get your comments as someone who may have firsthand knowledge about some of this information. So the one thing I want to call everybody's attention to is the sentence that follows where it's redacted, the allegations are consistent with our current understanding of PRC foreign interference activity in the greater Toronto area. So if you take that all together, what it is basically saying is whatever was redacted before it, it was alleged that the PRC interfered in the Don Valley North Liberal nomination of 2019, September 12th. So basically, what it's probably saying is that um, with the help of certain operatives, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that's what would have been redacted. Um, there's events that happened, um, allegedly. We haven't been able to corroborate them at this point in time, because remember, this is October. This is only two weeks after this report was, or the nomination actually took place. So at that point, in time, none of this had been substantiated by, by CSIS. But what they are saying is what was alleged, the events are completely consistent with how they understand the PRC, People's Republic of China, is operating in terms of their foreign interference activity in the greater Toronto area. So this method that they're using to interfere in the primaries, essentially the PRC has done it before in Correct. the GTA. Correct. We can't necessarily confirm it in this case, but it's on point with, with, with what they've been doing. Correct. So if we could flip to the second page, please. And what this is, is there's a, 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 a box here, which is redacted information and the italicized text there is a summary that's been provided. Um, what that says is the redacted text references campaign efforts of Hondong to register new Liberal Party members, including international students, to vote in the nomination race. Um, first of all, do you agree that there were campaign efforts of Handong to register new Liberal Party members to vote in the nomination race? Yes. Okay. And do you agree that there were, um, uh, that you made efforts to register new Liberal Party members, including international students in the nomination race? Yes. Okay. Now, this begins to become important, everybody, because all we heard from David Johnston and the other Liberals surrounding this is that these were points in time, you know, by themselves. You can't consider them by themselves. You have to look at the whole picture. None of, the, none of this is even true. Okay, so you have an intelligence document and what's most likely been redacted is all of the individual people's names. Because yeah, because you can't have your, your operatives who may be undercover just like exposed to the public in this manner. Right, and, and what is also probably there is all of, the, uh, all of the people that were actually registered by Han Dong, no doubt. So obviously you have to redact all of that. So the fact that it's right here saying 
Okay, so obviously he's going to register Liberal Party members. Yes, that is that's that is normal. not a surprise. Yeah, that's normal. Like even if you were a conservative candidate trying to win your nomination, you would go out and try to register as many new conservatives as possible so that they could come to the primary and vote for you. Right. That's normal. That's like political procedure. The making efforts to register international students is... That's the weird part. He's not. And he said yes. Okay. So... This part of the intelligence has been corroborated. I'm going to turn next to uh, one of the topical summaries that uh, has come out. And this is uh, titled Don Valley North DVN Liberal Party Nomination Race in 2019. And in fairness to you, sir, you received this document and had a chance to review it for the very first time this morning. And of course, that information is all coming after you provided us with your supplementary statement. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I should be very clear, there's a whole page of caveats here, which I think we've heard earlier in the day. But uh, this is essentially a summary of intelligence holdings produced by the Government of Canada. It's subject to many, many caveats. And again, I'm not suggesting to you that the intelligence discussed here is proven fact. Again, what I'm hoping you'll provide is any first-hand information that may shed light on what is said here. So if we can flip okay. to the second page, I wanted to take you to, I guess it's two, let's call it 2.1. See the first indent, the, the indented number one? Mm -hmm. There's a line that says, intelligence reporting indicated, this is obviously in relation to Don Valley North nomination contest 2019. Intelligence reporting indicated that buses were used to bring international students to the nomination process in support of Han Dong. Do you have any comments about the truthfulness of, of that statement? Um. I'm sorry, not, not commenting on the intelligence reporting, of course, sure. on whether buses were used to bring international students to the nomination process and support. Well, to the best of my knowledge, there's one bus. Okay. Um, uh, in support of Handong, I, 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 I just know that they, um, I was told that they, were, they came in to vote, and how they voted, and whether in support of me or, or my opponent, I, I really, there's no way for me to find out. There's no what? There's no way for me to find out how they voted. Okay. Um, were they um, students who you think were the same ones who you solicited for your support? I didn't see them, so I, I, I can't confirm. Okay. But I'm just trying to understand. You, you seem to have made the link between what you were told about this bus of students arriving and going to this school to, to solicit support from the students. Right. This is where he's caught. Right, that's why it sounds so ridiculous because he doesn't want to admit that, oh yeah, I knew that we were busing in these international students for the sole purpose of voting for me in the primary, not in the federal election, in the primary. Well, and when they discussed this previously, he said, oh, well, it's probably the students that came from Seneca, from, you know, NOIC, like, he, oh, okay. Let's talk about that. And now he's he's seeing like it's actually in an intelligence report that buses were used to bring in international students during the nomination process in support of Hong Dong. Now he's saying, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I can't say, you know, whether these students were, were brought in for that. Okay, well, these these students were, were probably the ones you spoke to when you went to this place, right? Well, I don't know. I didn't see them. And then, so this is where the inquisitor, inquisitor is saying, well, you're the one who said that that's where they probably came from. So now he's caught. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that he would kind of feign ignorance. Like, it should have been from the beginning. Well, I, I know a bus came in. I like If that was his answer consistently, it makes a lot of sense. Um... Do you, can, you, can you tell us anything about what, why you drew that link? Um, uh, because I, when, when um, 
uh, when my wife reminded me that there was there was a bus with students came in, I, I, I asked, I said, uh, you know, where it came from, and, and she indicated it was from Seneca residence, okay. and that's when I draw the connection. I was there to canvas for their support. And this is when you talk to your, I'm just trying to understand because you, the, you, you were told by someone on your campaign, sh I think you said shortly after September 12th, 2019. That's right. Okay, about a bus having arrived. Right. And did you understand at that time that it was from Seneca College? Um, I don't recall, but you know, when I talked to my wife recently about the, um, uh, which remind me about the bus, I asked her where was the bus from, and she said it was from the Seneca residence. Oh, I'm sorry, there was another line there I wanted to take you to. It's a uh, uh, sub point two. Uh, some intelligence reporting also indicated that the students were provided with falsified documents to allow them to vote, despite not being residents of DVN. The documents were provided by individuals associated with a known proxy agent. And then there's a footnote explaining what a proxy agent is. Do you have any knowledge of the information in this bullet point? I don't. Okay, so Fox, do you know what a proxy agent is? I do not. Good thing I do. So a proxy agent is an intermediary that um, basically in this case would be influencing the students and then reporting back to their contact, which would be another agent of the PRC. So that could be somebody at the consulate, that could be an official, um, or, or somebody else. So they're a middleman is what a proxy agent is. But what I can tell the audience is that the reason it is an issue for them to falsify documents saying that they live in Don Valley North is because when you are voting in the primary, you have to be part of that writing. Yep. Now, um, for example, if Cypher had continued and wanted to run for office, he was running in an adjacent writing to ours. So I wouldn't have been able to vote for him because it's not in our writing. The only way we would have, I would have been able to vote is if we moved. <laughs> Correct. So that's why it's important that these students had this, what they're alleging is fake documentation saying that they lived in Don Valley North when they didn't. And the intelligence, um, you can see actually in, in number three, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to be going through it, but it basically says that if they don't vote for Han Dong, then the PRC is threatening to remove their visas, pull them back to China, or cause issues with their families back in China. And we saw the exact same thing happen with Michael Chong. Threats were made against his family back in China because of the way he voted in, in Parliament. You think they're gonna care about a bunch of students? No, they threatened an MP and an MP's family. Why do they care about a group of students? That's my point. And, and that's the most horrible part about all of this. I understand that uh, when you uh, were, well, let's skip ahead. You were, of course, elected. Howard, can, we, can we just go back to the last point? I think sure because you were asking about the Seneca bus and when you show me the documents that's busing students, I automatically uh, understood as you meant the bus was the bus that I was talking about. So I, 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 I made an assumption that the bus mentioned in the document you just showed me uh, is the bus that we were, we were discussing earlier. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have made that automatic. No, that's okay. I, I think. I see. So you're saying that in point, I guess 2.1, mm -hmm. that first sentence that we read, it refers to buses. Yeah. And you made the um, assumption, if that's the right word, that that was referring to the bus from Seneca that you were made aware of. That we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That's why I made a correction that it was a, one bus. Yes. But uh, it's, I, I, I don't think it's fair for me to make that assumption. Right. I, I see your point. Um, it, and I think on the next bullet point, I already asked you if you had any comments about that. Is there something else you wanted to say about 2.2? No. no. Um, I'm going to turn then to another subject. You were, of course, elected to be the MP 
well, you ultimately ran the, won the Don Valley North nomination race, and then... Uh, Before we go any further, I just wanted to make the comment that that looks extremely bad for Han Dong. What it looks like, whether or not this is what actually happened, but what it looks like to the observers, including, no doubt, the Inquisitor... It looks like he's had time to sit there and think and kind of piece together everything in his head and try to come back and clarify this lie that he's yeah. he's been making. So We call that cleanup on aisle one. It looks incredibly bad. Yeah, you essentially want to completely revise your testimony. Oh, well, that's, that's why I thought it was this bus. It's because now... Like, and this is the problem, right? This is what happens when people try to guess where the uh, questions are going and they, they don't know. So they answer in a certain way and they guessed wrong. And then when they finally seen that whole picture come together, like Fox says, now they're tr trying to retroactively go and fix their testimony. So is it possible he's just obscenely nervous? In sure. theory. But again, you... you but I you mean, haven't prepped for this? Well, and and again, it's not even how you feel or or what it sometimes what it actually is happening. It's it's what you're coming off as. And this was a really bad move that makes it seem like Han Don was lying previously and now he's trying to tie it all together. Yeah, because like again, he seemed to be either lying or or making mistakes when it comes to the small things like did you read media reports yeah okay so you know about the irregularities i'm not aware of any real uh, irregularities what like it looks so bad so again if if you're making quote unquote mistakes or lying whatever it is on the small things then you can't be relied on when it comes to the big questions 